Grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is actually in our text, which appears in almost all the epistles. It was written in the first century because these first century Christians, like us, need grace. And why do we need grace? Because life is hard. There's sin in the world. There's aches and pains. There's trials and tribulations. There's losses that we face. There we're grieving. We have problems financially and with family and other things. So we need grace. They need the grace, and even more than we did, because they were at the beginning of the persecution. Paul himself was a witness to this. As a matter of fact, he at first was one of the persecutors. Paul, called to be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul did not choose to be an apostle. In fact, he was en route to Jerusalem to have Christians arrested for the simple crime of being a Christian. It was there that Jesus called him. Previously, Jesus had said to the twelve, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Paul could have heard the same thing in his own time. You and I can hear the same thing. You didn't choose God, he chose you. Now, when Paul says he is an apostle, he's not elevating himself above the Corinthians or the other Christians, because he says to them, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and are called to be in the body of Christ. The saints at Corinth, for that matter, Galatia, Thessalonica, Ephesus, and the other places, we're all called to be saints. And what is a saint? Anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That includes you and me. We did not ask to be Christians. We did not seek out Jesus. We didn't find Jesus, for Jesus found us. And he found us, according to Martin Luther, without any merit or worthiness in us. He didn't say, I'm choosing you or I'm choosing you because you're great people without any merit or worthiness in us. Paul goes on, I always thank my God for you because of the grace given to you in Christ Jesus. Grace is given to us, not something we have earned. I believe everybody here is a natural or is a natural born American. Am I right? Anybody want to question that? How did you choose to be an American? You didn't. It happened for you. Your parents made that decision for you, so to speak. Now, not all of our members are natural born Americans. They chose to be here. But 100% of our members never chose to be Christians. Luther put it this way, and some of you might be able to say it with me. I believe that I could not by my own reason or strength believe in my Lord Jesus Christ or come to him, but the Holy Ghost has called me by the gospel. That goes along with the verse we all know, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. This wasn't written to individual Corinthians, but to the congregation at Corinth. The gifts they needed to be a congregation, to be about the Lord's work, were theirs in total. Likewise with our congregation. We have all the spiritual gifts in this congregation we need to be a congregation. To do the things, to be the things the Lord Father wants us to be. Whether we would remain this size grow bigger, grow smaller. We're in God's hands with the gifts he has given us. I'll give you two illustrations of gifts. One is obvious. I was called to be the pastor of this congregation, and just as soon as I stepped down, our pastor took over. We were never here without the gift of ministry. Second illustration, very much needed in a modern congregation, the gift of having an organist. Think about it. How difficult it is to sing with now the Church of Christ would argue with you, you don't need, you shouldn't have one. But actually, they are such a blessing. When we first started here, we had an organist, 
And she came to me and she said, I'm terminal. I said, what does this mean? Good Lutheran question. She said, I'm dying, I've got cancer. Started calling around, got one. One of the very best there was in the county. Time came when he got sick. What happened? We had two wonderful organists right here in this congregation. There was no delay without having them. So whether we think of the gifts that we have in the president of the congregation, an elder, financial secretary, choir member, altar guild usher, all the different things that go into being a congregation which can function, we have them right here. And one of the gifts we have in this congregation, we read it in some of the, the literature that we have there in the, in the narthex and some of the cards that come back to us, we have the gift of friendliness. People know us for that. And just being a member, coming to church, praying for the church, supporting it with your prayers and with your bounties, helps this congregation to have the gifts that it needs to be a congregation. Now, he will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we have the means of grace right here in the church. It has been said that the church has four legs to its table. Word, sacrament, prayer, fellowship. We have these opportunities right here. Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and no one can pluck them out of my hand. St. Paul said, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now that sounds like eternal security. Do we believe in that? In a sense, yes. If we mean that nothing outside can pluck you out of God's hand, can take your faith away from you, we have eternal security. But if it means that you yourself can never deny your faith, can never lose your faith on your own, no, we don't believe in eternal security. You can lose that. And we've had members, sadly, that have lost their faith. Now, for those who believe in eternal security, for that once you're saved, you're always saved. What about John 6? There we read that some of his disciples, it's an important word, some of his disciples would follow him no more. And Jesus said, he who endures until the end will be saved. That means you may have had a good start, but if you don't finish, you don't win. What I have found in some people who believe in eternal security at all costs, they are trusting in eternal security and not in the cross. They are trusting in some altar call or some decision that they made, not in Jesus. Now, you will be held blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. That sounds too good to be true. And for some people, it is too good to be true. Why do I say that? I'm going to go back about 70 years when I was a young boy in a country church. And there the guest evangelist preached a revival. And he said, God has got a camera. And he's photographing everything you've ever done. And I don't care if you're a Christian or not. In the last day, there'll be a big movie screen out there. And everything you ever did will be revealed to everybody. Santa Claus, so you better be good for goodness <laughs> sake. Well, maybe he had never read John chapter five. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in me has passed out of death unto life. He will not face the judgment. I strongly believe that nobody here wants to have everything they've ever done exposed to everybody. Not even King David. Why? Because he wrote this. Clear thou me from hidden faults. In the Psalms we read, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he put thy transgressions away from thee and will remember them no more. And then from Micah, who is a God like you who pardons and forgives sins? You do not stay angry forever, but delight in showing mercy. You will have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl our sins into the depths of the sea. 
Now, God has guardian angels. He has messenger angels. He has archangels. He has fighting angels like Michael. He has cherubim, and he has seraphim. You might have to get your Google out. You might know better than I do. I don't think he has any deep diving uh, angels who are going to go into the depths of the sea and bring those sins back up again. Does he have those kind of angels? I don't think so either. That means when you draw your last breath, you'll see Jesus with open arms and he will say to you, come blessed of my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundations of the earth were laid. To which you can say, Amen. Amen. God bless.